You know, the Republicans, they ran in 2010 saying they wanted to govern Minnesota in the worst possible way. And they have. It's great to be here again. See so many people, mostly dressed in blue. And Janet, I want to thank you for putting on this uh, tremendous event. It's a great way to bring us together, celebrate what we've accomplished, and get ready to do it all again. You know, I must say that although a blue state is our aspiration, at the legislative session last year, things looked pretty purple to me. In fact, there are a few ominous warnings of what things would be like if, if Minnesota were red. And it was not a pretty sight. You know, the Republicans, they ran in 2010 saying they wanted to govern Minnesota in the worst possible way. And they have. <laughs> Leadership scandals, illegal firings of uh, non-political employees, transparency about the shape of oil wells, and most of all, an absolute unwavering devotion to their mantra that there will be no tax increases on the richest Minnesotans. And everything else, everything else sacrificed at that altar. Property taxes increased, school funding withheld, Borrowing from our future with tobacco bonds, cutting funding for family PCA care, cutting funding for emergency medical care for people, everything and anything so as not to make the wealthiest 2% of Minnesotans pay their fair share of taxes. Now, I got elected governor on that platform, and... and And I remember, and I believe in it. I believe it's the right policy. I believe it's the right politics. I believe it's going to be winning politics again next November. And I hope the DFL party will take a strong stand. We're for tax fairness for Minnesota. I worked for Walter Mondale when he was a United States Senator. And Fritz once said he, uh, he knew a lot of stupid politicians, but he never knew one who couldn't count. Well, I can count. 2% of the people of Minnesota should be very grateful to the Republicans for doing everything to protect them from paying a dollar more in taxes. And I'm sure they'll be very grateful with their contributions to their campaigns, and they'll all show up at the polls. But there's 98% of the rest of us, the people of Minnesota, who did not benefit from that policy at all. and who know it's wrong, and know it's unfair, know it's wrong that a homestead credit gets eliminated and their property taxes go up, small businesses' property taxes go up, so the richest Minnesotans don't have to pay their fair share of taxes. Cut here, cut there, gut and cut. No reform, just gut and cut. So the rich don't have to pay their fair share of taxes. Starve our schools, starve people who are in need of help and dependent on government for their survival, take emergency care away from people, cut the spirit of Minnesota only so the rich won't have to pay their fair share of taxes. Well, we're going to change that next November. We're going to make this a blue state. We're going to reelect the great president of the United States, Barack Obama. We're going to re-elect our outstanding United States Senator, Amy Klobuchar. I always say about uh, Amy that she's a big improvement over her predecessor. I know them both well, so I speak with authority on the subject. We're going to re-elect our members of Congress, and we're going to pick up some more seats. We're going to make this state a blue congressional delegation. And then, and I really ask your help on this, 
We're going to get a DFL majority back to the Minnesota Senate and a DFL majority back to the Minnesota House. Because I don't want four more years of this kind of disaster. I don't want four more years of people who sit there and just say no and no and no and no, unless you got more than a million dollars. So enjoy tonight. Get the spirit. I might come back again next year. I hope I'll be invited back. <laughs> I want to see this state blue. On to victory this fall. Thank you, Governor. Thank you.